All right, now we're going to sew our pant muslin together. So you want to take the front and back pant leg that we that you drew the fit lines onto, the balance lines, and you want to put those right sides together. So you can see here I have my front and back, and I'm laying the back right here on top of the front, okay? You want to make sure those are together and not with one of the pant legs. You don't want to mix your front pant leg with the balance lines on it with the back pant leg that doesn't have the balance lines on it. You want to have the pant leg with the balance lines together. All right, and just put a pin in to hold them together so that those two go together. You also don't want to end up with a right, two right legs or two left legs, okay? So you can see here I've laid out mirror images. I have a front pant leg, or excuse me, I have a left pant leg and a right pant leg, okay? And I've pinned them together. So I know that I have two different legs before I start sewing, so I don't end up with two left legs or two right legs. I'm going to start by stay stitching, okay, so I'm going to stay stitch the crotch and the waistlines, all right, these, when you stay stitch, you stay stitch each, each pattern piece individually, okay, so I'm going to stay stitch the crotch of my back, the crotch of my front, the waist of my back, and the waist of my front, okay, all individually as you can see here. So I'm going to start with the waist, and then I'll go ahead stay stitch that and you're going to stay stitch at your normal seam allowance so we have half inch seam allowance on this so that's what I'll do my stay stitching at a half inch and again you're going to stay stitch each pant leg individually they will not be stay stitched together so you'll stay stitch both your front pant legs and both your back pant legs all individually all right and then once you're done stay stitching them then we'll sew them together. All right, so I've just stay stitched both the waist of one side of my pant leg. And make sure you're doing, you'll only see in this video me doing one side. You're gonna do both sides. And what I mean by that is you'll be doing the front, or the right side left, um, the right side pant leg front and back and the left side pant leg front and back, okay? Just don't do the right side, do both right and left. Okay, so here I'm doing the crotch line of the pant, and now I'll do the other crotch of the front. Okay, the stay stitching will keep um, anything from stretching, all right? When you cut through your waist, when we cut out our pant leg, we cut out the waist and we cut out the crotch. That's cut diagonally. And through curves so it has bias in there so it can stretch very easily we don't want it to stretch while we're sewing on it okay so it's very important to um, stay stitch them and make sure you stay stitch before you sew anything together all right so now we're gonna sew in the darts so once you've done all your stay stitching sewing your darts is the next step you only need to mark one side of the dart okay your dart leg has two legs only mark the side of the leg that's going to be facing up towards you as you stitch, okay? So in this case, I marked the left side of my stays, of my dart legs, okay? So fold the uh, two outside notches at the waist together, and then go ahead and stitch. Make sure the tip of the dart is right in the center of the crease once you folded it, or it will be incorrect. So go ahead and stitch all your darts in your front and back pant legs once you've finished your stay stitching. All right, we're done stay stitching our darts. Uh, excuse me, we're done stitching our darts, and now we can go ahead and sew the front and back pant leg together. Right. So take one of your pant legs, this is my back pant leg, and then take your other pant leg, the front one, and lay them right sides together. And then you're going to just line up your notches. Um, and pin them together. So in this case, I'm gonna line up my hip notch and my crotch notch. 
and pin them. And also pin it at the waist. I'm pinning at the knee. And then typically I put one pin in at the hem as well. Okay, so that's the side seam. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the end seam. I'm pinning it together at the knee. And at the crotch, remember to trim any threads. Don't have a bunch of threads hanging off. And also at the hem of the pant, I will pin it together. And then once you've pinned it, go ahead and stay stitch, or excuse me, stitch them together at a half inch. Make sure you back tack at the beginning and end because this is a permanent seam. Um, one other thing I want to mention about stay stitching, it keeps um, obviously our um, crotch and waist from stretching as we sew on it or as we do a fitting. But another thing stay stitching does, it can mark seam allowance. Okay, So for example, at the either at the front or the back of the pant, you're going to have to leave 7 inches open from the waist so that you can try it on a form or a person, right? For them to be able to get in, there has to be at least a seven inch opening from true waist down. So if we stay stitch, you know, for example, if our opening's in the back and we have the back stay stitched, um, we'll know exactly where to pin close that opening once it's on the fit model, all right? And we'll know exactly where the seam allowance is. So stitch, Stay stitching can have more than one use, and it's actually very useful for marking exactly where the, the seam allowance begins. All right, so the inseam has been st stitched. Let's go ahead and stitch the side seam. And again, that's half inch as well, and you'll back tack at the beginning and end. All right, so here we are finishing up this pant leg. You'll do the same thing to the other pant leg, okay? So as soon as you finish stitching this one, go ahead and stitch the other one. Here is one pant leg totally stitched. Let's pull it right side out. See what it looks like. We still need to press open the seams, but just want you to see here what it looks like a little bit. All right, so you can see all the balance lines on there, and they're matching up at the inseam and at the side seam, okay? So again, those lines are very important for when we do our fittings and pattern alterations, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and press this now. We're going to start with our darts. I like to use a sleeve board and just on the edge of it, I like to put the tip of the dart right on the edge. And then remember when you press your darts, you press the seam allowance of the dart towards the center. So if it's in the front, you'll be pressing the seam allowance towards the center front. And if it's in the back, you'll press the seam allowance towards the center back. Okay, so those are my front darts. I press them towards center front. And here are the larger um, back darts. I'll press these towards center back. Again, keeping that tip right on the edge, the tip of the dart right on the edge of the sleeve board, I find is very useful. 
gives you a nice clean press of the dart. All right, those are pressed. Once you press your dart, just go ahead and we can press our side seam and our end seam. So again, we'll just press those seams open. And when you get up to the hip on the side seam, you'll probably need to use the uh, Taylor's ham to really give that a good press because there is a little bit of a curve there. Okay, once you finish the side seam, go ahead and press the end seam. And you're just pressing that open as well. And again, after you finish pressing this pant leg, go ahead and press your other pant leg. You want all your darts and seams to be pressed before we um, join the two pant legs together at the crotch. Okay, now that both pant legs have been pressed, we're going to sew them together. First thing you want to do is have one pulled right side out and the other one inside out. Okay, because we're going to put right sides together. So the way we want to do this, um, now that they're sewn, is to have one right side out and one inside out. Put the one that's right side out into the one that's inside out and line up your inseams, okay? You wanna line those inseams up exactly right at the crotch. Once you have them lined up, go ahead and just start putting them together. And make sure that seam is lined up perfectly with the other one. Where they meet at the crotch, the inseam lines up perfectly with the other one. And I like to put a pin in both seam allowances there that way when you're sewing it, one seam allowance doesn't get pushed back by the presser foot of the sewing machine. Okay, so we remember we need to leave um, seven inches below the waist open, um, either at center back or center front. The choice is up to you. I'm going to leave my center back one open. So here's my true waist. And I'm going to leave that open for seven inches. So I actually have a notch where it's seven inches below the waist. And so I'm going to leave that. I'll start pinning at that notch. And that's where I'll stop stitching because this whole part will be open. So now I've pinned that together. I'm going to go ahead and continue pinning through that crotch seam. You don't need lots of pins. You're matching up two of the same exact seam, so it should go together very easily. And I'm going to pin together my front crotch seam. And just line up my waist. And again, I'm leaving the center back open because to get it on my fit model or my dress form, they need to be able to get the waist around their hips. Okay, so I, to do that, you have to have at least seven or eight inches open. Okay. I have it stay stitched so I know exactly where I can pin it closed once it's on the fit model or form. So I'm going to stitch around. All right, so at the waist, go ahead and just start stitching right at a half inch. And be careful when you get to the inseam, you don't want to um, fold your seam allowance back as you stitch over it. So it'll create bulk and it won't sit right. Here I'm just pushing it back because it was starting to fold over a little. That's all I was doing. Yeah, we can 
pin and stitch, and then here's my last pin right here. This is where my pants will be open so I can get it onto the fit model. My back tack right there. And there we go, we've sewn our crotch seam now. Now we didn't put a closure or anything in this because it's really better to um, fit it first before we put closures in. All right, so now you pull the one leg out of the other and then we can see it sewn together. Okay, front to back, that's my back, it's open. And now we're going to press it, all right. So go ahead and we're just going to press the seam open. Just place it over your sleeve board, ironing board, whatever you have. And just press it open. And I'm not going to, I'm going to press as far down as I can. Careful of pressing the wrinkles. Um, because of the curve, I have to stop there. And that's fine. Okay, we're just creating the muslin. So again, just press down as far as, far as you can. And then here, obviously, I don't need to press the opening. But where my stitching starts, I can press that small portion open into the crotch. And there we go. All right, now you can pull it right side out. And now we've successfully sewn our first pant muslin. All right, you can see one side has all the markings, the balance lines, crease lines on it. And then one side does not, okay? Since these are symmetrical, we didn't need those on both sides. If it was any symmetrical garment, then we would have had it. And there you have it. Your pant muslin is finished. You can now fit it to your form or model.